to help us discover an approach to obtaining the probability of a coincidence taking place, such as two people in a room sharing the same birthday, month and day, let's take a look at two similar situations. What is the probability of spinning green at least once, spinning the spinner shown eight times? Hmm, well, it might be easier for us to think about what is the probability of not spinning green at least once, spinning the spinner eight times. The probability of not spinning green on the first spin of this spinner would be three ways out of four. In the second spin of this spinner, again, the probability of not spinning green would be three ways out of four. In the third spin of the spinner, the same thing would happen again. A three out of four probability that we would not spin green. Now, since we're spinning this spinner eight times, it would appear then, from what we've learned in our rules of probability up to this point, that we could multiply 3 fourths times 3 fourths times 3 fourths eight times totally. Note, the answer we obtain written as a decimal, but thought of as a percent, is roughly 10% of the time we would not get a green sector when spinning the spinner. Now, also thinking back on the fact that if the probability of not getting something is 10%, then the probability of getting it would be about 90%, right? So, if we think of what is the probability of spinning green at least once, spinning the spinner shown eight times, we could take the answer we obtained from not getting green in eight spins and subtract it from one. And notice it gives us a decimal of roughly 0.899, which is roughly 0.9, which is roughly 90%. Let's look at another example. What is the probability of rolling at least one two when rolling a die six times? Well, again, it might be easier to look at the opposite situation of this. What is the probability of not rolling one, two, when rolling a die six times? Well, the first time we roll a die, the probability of not rolling two is five ways out of six. The second time, it's five ways out of six. The third time is five ways out of six. And if we examine all six times, we're looking at five, six times five, six times five, six, written six times, or this fraction, or roughly 33% of the time, we can expect not to roll as two when rolling a die six times. Well, our question is, what is the probability of rolling at least one two when rolling a die six times? So, as happened last time in the very last problem we looked at, we want to subtract this answer, the rough 33%, away from 1. And you can see it's roughly 67% of the time we will obtain at least 1, 2 when rolling a die 6 times. So, this brings us to the birthday question. How many people are needed in a room so that the probability of two people sharing the same birthday, month and day, is roughly one half or 50%. Let's start by thinking about what the probability is that two people will have the same birthday and then expand from there. Actually, it's probably easier to find the probability that two people have different birthdays and then use the fact that the probability of the same birthday is equal to 1 minus the probability of people having different birthdays. Well, what is the probability of two different birthdays for two people? Well, let's see. There's 
365 days in a year will assume no leap years. So the first person has 365 ways out of 365 to have their birthday. For the next person not to share their birthday, they have 364 out of 365 ways that that can happen. So you can see, multiplying these two together, there's roughly almost a 100% chance that two people in a room will not share the same birthday. Because if we subtract this figure from one, we get roughly 0.3% chance that two people will share the same birthday. What about three people having the same birthday? Well, if we use similar reasoning to what we just did, let's look at three people not having the same birthday, having different birthdays. Well, it'll be 365 out of 365 times 364 out of 365 times 363 out of 365. Notice the first person is 365 out of 365. The second person, just like before, 364 out of 365. The third person can't match either of the other two birthdays, so it's 363 out of 365. And notice we get 0.9917958. It goes on forever, of course. It's roughly 99% chance that three people will not share the same birthday. So then, what is the probability that at least one pair of these people share the same month and day birthday? It would be one minus the 99%, or roughly about a 1% chance. Now, we could continue following this type of reasoning and determine the probability of a match not occurring and subtracting it from one each time and keep increasing the number of people. If we do this, we can arrive at the following table. Notice, for example, if we have five people in a room, the probability of no birthday match would be roughly 97%, which makes about a 3% probability that there would be a matched pair in that room. If we go down this table a little further, let's say there's 10 people present in the room. There's about an 88% chance that no birthday match would occur among these 10 people. It would be this figure, 0.88305182, comes from 365 out of 365, multiplied by 364 out of 365, 363 out of 365, times 362 out of 365, and you go out until you have 10 of those fractions. We arrive then at roughly an 88% chance of no repeats of birthdays. Well, if there's an 88% chance that there is not a birthday match, you subtract that from one and you get about a 12% chance that you would have a birthday match. So as you can see, as we move down this table, the amounts continue to go down here. They continue to grow here. And when do we finally get to a 50-50 situation? Well, as you can see, if there are 23 people present in the room, there's a 49% chance, roughly, that there will not be a birthday match. And over here, by subtracting that figure from 1, we have roughly a 50% chance that there will be a birthday match. We have now used the ideas and concepts of probability to figure out the answer to the birthday question. Thanks for listening.